All right, here we're looking at a very classic geometry question. You have a straight line, and there's a point outside that line, and you want to find the shortest path from the point to your line or line segment. The shortest path from a point to a line is always a perpendicular line. You'll get problems like uh, there's a building that needs internet, uh, internet cables installed uh, or phone cables and outside is where the current cables are. What is the shortest path from the building to the cable so that the cost is minimized? So that means that they're going to be buying less materials. Um, obviously, you don't, they're not going to do you know, zigzags everywhere to get here. Uh, and even if they did use straight lines, the shortest line is always a perpendicular line. So, here that's what you'll be finding. Obviously, you're going to need your straight edge and your compass. So, the way to do it is like this. Normally, when you guys found your perpendicular bisector, notice that you were using the endpoints. Here, we're not using the endpoints. You have to start at the point you already have. And what I'm going to do is that I'm going to close my compass enough so that when I swing it, I hit the line twice. Okay, so I'm going to make sure that, yeah, if I think a little bit longer. Okay, so I'm going to hit the line twice. I'm going to hit it here and over here. So I've hit it twice, here and here. What I've done is actually I've put this in the middle of these two points. So it's like you're finding your perpendicular bisector, except you're going a little bit backwards. You have the, a point already, and you have to find the endpoints. So I have my endpoints. I remember normally we, we swung on the top and the bottom. There was another way also that I showed you. You could open it up, or you can close it a little bit more and do it again if you didn't have enough space. Well, that's what we'll do. Um, I'll close it a little bit and notice that my needles is at a point of intersection so I'll use that and still using the same amount of opening I'll go to the other end point and where it intersects it lets you know it, I don't have to do the other side because I already have one of the points that I need I have this so using your straight edge I just go to where it intersects I line it up with the building I already have and just bring it straight down and for me it's gonna look like this and there you have it you have a perpendicular line to this uh, line segment and remember this is gonna be your shortest path now in a triangle when they ask you to find the altitude well, think about it. altitude means how high something is, right? So in an altitude for the triangle, all you want to do is you want to get its height. And it depends on the base. There's actually three altitudes depending on how you put it. If you leave your triangle like this, this is the altitude. If you turn it in another direction, okay, if you put this on the bottom, you have it like this. Uh, there you go. If you have it like this, okay, your altitude will have to come down here. So, uh, depending on what it looks like, you'll get different altitudes. If this is my triangle, and I'm, let's go ahead and name all the vertices. Let's say this is A, B, C. If I'm trying to find the altitude let's say BD, you know that it's gonna go off this vertex and what you wanna do is you wanna come straight down so that you get a perpendicular line. Well, even though it's a triangle, what you're focusing on is this line, 
segment, AC, and this point. So is exactly the same way that I showed you before. A line segment and a point, and you want to get a perpendicular line. So we'll do the same steps. I'll put my needle on B. I'll use that as my point, and I'm going to... I always double check first to make sure that I'm able to hit this line twice and I am so I'll mark it here and here. I'll now take my needles there and this time I'm gonna close them a little bit so I'm gonna go underneath and okay this point is here so I mark and now I go to my other point which is right here. So just like before, like I said, even though it's a triangle, notice the same steps because you're making a perpendicular line from a vertex, a point, to a line segment. So I match this up and my altitude is right here. Okay, and don't forget to show your, your mark so that we know it's perpendicular. There. All right, what happens when you've been asked to bisect an angle. So that means you're cutting the angle in half. Uh, so no matter what angle you're given, it's still the same steps. What you'll do is you'll put your needle on your vertex and open it or close your compass however much you like. Um, so I'll just keep this the same here. I'm going to go ahead and mark both rays of my angle and you could open this a little more or close it, whatever you like depending on how much space you have. I have a lot of space, so I'm gonna keep this the same. And in my arc, in my intersections, I'm gonna go ahead and put the needle again. And I'm gonna estimate halfway. It looks like it's around here. So I'm going to remember to overestimate. I'm gonna mark here using the same opening for a compass. I'm gonna to go to the other intersection and now intersect here. Look at what you have. You have this point of intersection, and since you're cutting this angle in half, shouldn't you start at your vertex? Yeah. So using my straight edge, I'll go ahead and and make my new ray, and this new ray cuts this angle in half. So this is my angle bisector. So I know that this angle and this angle are congruent. I've cut them in half. A classic problem you'll get with this is you have street A and street B and they're making houses on these streets and they both need electricity. So to minimize cost they'll run the electricity cables in the center and what happens is that the the bisector is equidistant from street A and street B okay so it's not closer to one than the other it's exactly in the middle forever